There's more to set that people free from our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to church. And welcome to all those who are joining us, maybe for the first time. Maybe you're here because you've been invited to our nativity service, and we're going to be enjoying that very shortly. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Um, we are just a few days away from Christmas Day, and we will be here online on Christmas Day, 10 o'clock. You can join us then. Uh, but today, today is our nativity. It's a nativity service, a nativity day like we have never seen before, much like so much of this year. And um, I hope you're going to enjoy it, and I hope you're going to take part in it, even from the comfort of your own living room. Um, but we're going to start our service with an amazing carol, an amazing song of praise.
pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that despite all the obstacles, all the restrictions, all the ways that we can't meet together, I thank you that we can meet this morning online. I thank you for all that has been prepared, all that is going to speak directly to our hearts right now. And Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to this amazing story, this amazing account of how you came to earth. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to hand over to Rach and the team now. Um, And this is not a nativity just to sit back and watch like you're watching some film at home. This is a nativity which is interactive and we want you to join in. So take note of the instructions and I think you're really going to enjoy this. So welcome to Kingfisher Church Nativity of 2020. And what a strange year it's been, but we're so glad that you've joined us this morning. I'm really hoping that some of you are sat on your sofas this morning in your nativity costume that you've come as a character. And, you know, don't forget to take your selfie later and post it to our Facebook page. That would be amazing. And more than just being in costume, we'd love you to join in with some choruses this morning. Um, There's going to be actions for them. But don't worry, we've got the lovely Jake here on hand to help you with those actions. So just follow him um, for your lead and your cue and you'll, you'll be amazing. So welcome to It Begins in Bethlehem, a nativity rhyme for Christmas time. Okay, so we're going to start today by welcoming our actors. So to start with, we're going to give a great big... Blessed are you among women. ...for our Marys. Then we're going to give a great big... No need to worry. ...for our Josephs. We'll give an enormous... Moo, ba, ee ...for all our beautiful animals. Then a great big... Surprise! Don't be afraid. For all our lovely angels. Then a great big... Don't be afraid, you nuts! For our shepherds. And finally, a great big... Twinkle, twinkle, little star. For our stars and our star watchers. Now, our story today is going to begin with Mary. And while I read the verses, there is a chorus in this section that we would really love you to join in with. Jake's going to do the actions for us. So let's just give this a quick go. It goes like this. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. So we'll just give you one extra practice for this one as it's a long one. It goes like this. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. A woman called Mary was doing her chores when an angel arrived, but not through the doors. He simply appeared and she dropped to the floor. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. God is with me, she wondered. But what does that mean? What is this all about? Is it some kind of dream? The angel just smiled. Don't be scared. Please don't scream. God is happy with you and will bless you. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. 
You'll soon have a baby, the angel went on, a quite special baby called Jesus, God's son, the heir of King David. He'll sit on his throne and his kingdom will last forever. But how, Mary asked, I don't understand. I'm engaged to be wed, but he's not yet my man. Trust God, said the angel. He's got it all planned. God's spirit will come upon you. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. Lord, help us be like Mary, who answered when you asked. Help us learn to give and serve no matter what the task. Now, the next person to enter our story today is Joseph. Now, Joseph is engaged to Mary, but he's just found out that she's having a baby and it's not his. Now, there's a chorus about this and we'd love you to join in. So follow the lovely Jake and all will be good. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful, her love strong and deep, and her baby is God's own son. All night Joseph tossed, all night Joseph turned. He just couldn't sleep. He'd only just learned that Mary was pregnant, and what's more, she'd confirmed that the baby she bore wasn't his. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful, her love strong and deep, and her baby is God's own son. She told him this tale, an angelic visit, a son to be born by God's Holy Spirit. The more she went on, the less he believed it. He wanted to break their engagement. But just as sleep came, that angel appeared. Don't worry, he said, there's nothing to fear. I know that you're troubled, so you need to hear that Mary is telling the truth. The baby she bears is God's holy son. Call his name Jesus, for he is the one God promised to send to save everyone. Emmanuel, God is with us. He's the answer to all that the prophets have said. So keep your engagement, be glad and be wed. And when Joseph woke up, that's just what he did. He took Mary to be his wife. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful, her love strong and deep, and her baby is God's own son. Then Mary and Joseph, her husband, went down to be counted by Caesar in Bethlehem town. There were no empty rooms for the couple to stay, so they stopped in a place where the animals lay. And there in the hay, she gave birth to God's son and cuddled and cradled her small special one. Okay, so it's time now for our shepherds and our angel visitors to join the story. And they too have a chorus during this section. And it goes like this. Sing praise to God and give him glory. Celebrate his wondrous story of love and joy and peace to men. For it begins in Bethlehem. Shepherds lying on a hill. The night was silent, all was still. They watched their flock of grazing sheep and tried hard not to fall asleep. When bright and white, an angel came to light the night, a fiery flame. The shepherds trembled where they lay, but the angel said, don't be afraid. Sing praise to God and give him glory. Celebrate his wondrous story of love and joy and peace to men, for it begins in Bethlehem. The news is good, the news I bring. Good news to make you leap and sing. Good news for people everywhere. Good news of joy for all to share. Good news for God has kept his word and sent his saviour, Christ the Lord, the one he promised he would send, is born this day in Bethlehem. And this will be a sign for you. This is how you'll know it's true. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloth, sleeping in a cattle trough. The angel then was joined by more, six and 12 and 24, and then too many more to number, a heaven choir loud as thunder. And so the angels left that place, just like they come without a trace. 
except for all they sang and said, which echoed in the shepherds' heads. Let's go to Bethlehem and see, the shepherds all as one agreed. They found the baby where he lay, asleep upon a bed of hay. They told them what the angels said, and Mary smiled and raised her head. A secret hid there in her eyes, for she was not one bit surprised. So back they went to sheep and hill, no longer silent, hardly still, but singing loud like angels bright of all that they had seen that night. Sing praise to God and give him glory. Celebrate his wondrous story of love and joy and peace to men, for it begins in Bethlehem. our story we have our star watchers they've been watching a star but it actually is going to take them a little bit of time to find Jesus in Bethlehem they don't arrive the same night that the shepherds do they probably turn up about a year later and that's when they end up knocking on King Herod's door but we've got a chorus for them as well and we'd love you to follow Jake and join in with this and it goes like this one hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers followed the star. The star watchers watched the stars go by, looking for secrets in the sky. And then they saw a special star away in the west, away off far. <gasps> a king's been born, that's what it means. Judea way, or so it seems. So they climbed aboard their camely beasts and set off west from their homes back east. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump, the star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump, the star watchers followed the star. At last their journey came to an end. They parked their camels in Jerusalem. Then they went to Herod, king of the nation, to ask him for some information. 
Oh, king, they asked. They were quite polite. Somewhere around here on this starry night, a brand new baby king abides. Can you tell us where this child resides? Now a worried look crossed Herod's face. He had no plans to be replaced. So he asked his priests if they could tell where this brand new baby king might dwell. Well, the priests all answered straight away. Bethlehem is what the prophets say. Then Herod thought an evil thing. I think I need to meet this king. Star watchers, friends, King Herod smiled. In Bethlehem, you'll find the child. Would you tell me where you find him, please? The exact address would put my mind at ease. Herod, of course, told them a lie. He'd already planned for the child to die. When he found the boy, that's what he'd do. So the star watchers left without a clue. The shining star led them to the place, a simple house, not some fancy space. And when they saw the little boy, they gave him a pile of special toys. Presents rather fit for a king, a bunch of shiny golden things, a spice called myrrh, a sort of perfume, while smelly frankincense filled the room. Then in the night they had a dream that showed them Herod's evil scheme. So they never said where the boy's house lay, but went straight home by another way. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump, the star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump, the star watchers followed the star. Lord, help us to be like star watchers, following your lead, looking for your guidance in every word and deed. So we've had a lovely time this morning celebrating this Christmas story. We do it every year and we do it for a reason. And that's why there's one final poem for me to read you today. So what is the point of angels and shepherds and camels and stars, you say? Is it just a nice story to tell children to celebrate Christmas Day? Well, it's not just a story. It's not just for kids. It's the hinge on which all history swings. That Bethlehem baby grew into a man who challenged all powers and kings. He taught us that love is better than hate, that serving beats being in charge. He showed us the value of each human life, the little as well as the large. And then on a cross, he died for us, died to take all our wrongs away yet walked three days later right out of his tomb to turn death's dark night today. And that is the good news. The angels proclaimed the heart of all Jesus would do, a new life for now, a new life forever. And that's his Christmas present to you. Just want to thank you so much for joining in with us today. And we're going to give one last round of applause for all our beautiful actors today. So we'll start with a great big... A blessed are you among women. For our Mary, a great big... No need to worry. For our Joseph, an enormous... Moo, ba, ee For our animals, a great big... Surprise, don't be afraid. For all our angels, a great big... Don't be afraid, are you nuts? For all our shepherds, and finally, a great big... Twinkle, twinkle, little star. For all our stars and star watchers.
Well, how amazing was that? Big round of applause, everybody, at home or online. Thank you, Rach. Thank you, team. Thank you, children, especially, for all that you have done to bring us a nativity, even, <laughs> even during this pandemic. It's been, it's been amazing. Thank you so much. I, well, I want to read to you from um, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1, and it starts like this. In the beginning... The word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. Well, our whole Advent theme this year has been, it begins it begins. I think in a year where there has been so much cancelled or suspended, where COVID has brought an end to so much, we need this hope of new beginnings. You know, we often see December as an ending as we approach the end of another year. When we finally get to Christmas Day, it can feel like an ending after all the Christmas activities and preparation. And there's a real sense on Boxing Day, isn't there, that Christmas is over. But Advent, this time that we are in right now, doesn't count down to an ending. It marks the beginning, actually the beginning of the church calendar. And Christmas just heralds the beginning of a new year. It's been great to use the, the Bible Society Nativity this year. That's where it's from. And it was called It Begins in Bethlehem because that's the point. The arrival of Jesus as a baby wasn't the end of the story. It was just the beginning. You know, often the nativity gets wrapped up in the stable with Jesus in the manger, surrounded by angels and animals and shepherds and kings, just like we've seen already this morning. And that's where we usually leave it. But in reality, it was the beginning. The beginning of God fulfilling all that he had promised for hundreds of years. Yes, just like the angel said to the, to the shepherds, that that day in the city of David in Bethlehem, a saviour had been born, who was Christ the Lord. I mean, a birth is just a new beginning. It's a new life. And he was the Messiah. The, the one the world had been waiting for was finally here. But actually the angel also said, that the baby they would find wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger was just a sign. A sign of all that was still to come. You know, as we think again on that nativity scene, the sign of that baby is meant to generate hope and joy in us, just like it did with those shepherds who came to visit him. Hope and joy for all that God has done and all that he is still going to do. You know, his promise of a saviour coming to earth became a reality in that moment, but the best was still to come. I mean, the birth of Jesus was pretty miraculous. And we're talking a virgin birth. We're talking the appearance of angels. A star that led kings from a distant land right to him. But actually... The life of Jesus wouldn't be defined by his birth, but by his death and resurrection. You know, when we leave that nativity scene, we fast forward 33 years. I mean, which seems like a lifetime, doesn't it? Especially when you're little. 33 years before Jesus accomplished what he had really come to do, which was to die for you and me. You know, Advent reminds us that there is always a, a time of waiting here on earth. You know, I bet the children can't wait for Christmas Day to come. Just a few days away. I bet that still feels like forever. But you know, Jesus is worth the wait. And when the right time came, his death paid for all the wrong things we have done that have separated us from God. 
enabling our relationship with him to be restored so that you and I can know God's love. We can experience his presence, Emmanuel, God with us. And we can be guided by his hand and realize that we are not alone. You know, it's only Jesus who can reconnect us to the one who created us and deal with the hurt and the guilt that so many of us live with, that feeling that we don't measure up somehow. I mean, maybe you're living with a sense that there is something wrong with you and you're anxious about the future. Well, Jesus is the one who can change all of that. He came and he died so that we can know our true identity as his children, heirs to the king. Do you know that yet? Do you know him like that? I mean, that is the good news that the angels were singing about. That first Christmas news that the Savior had arrived. News of great comfort and joy. And you know, even his death wasn't an ending because Jesus came back to life. Death was defeated. Hope was renewed. And every time somebody turns to him and believes on him, they can experience a new beginning too with an amazing hope for the future. It began over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, but the story is not over yet. That's what we've been learning this Advent time, that Jesus is coming back. It's another promise that God has made and he will return at just the right time. And this time, the whole world will see his arrival. That's the hope that we can have. A great relationship with him now and a home in heaven. So whether you are just starting out in life, whether you're one of the little ones who took part this morning, or maybe you're in middle age, or maybe you're in your latter years, whatever, today, today can mark a new beginning for you. What a gift. And it doesn't matter whether you think that you're on the good list or the naughty list. This is a gift that is freely available to every one of us because of what Jesus has done for us. And that is the good news that the angels proclaimed. The heart of all Jesus would do. A new life for now. A new life forever. That's his Christmas present to you. You know, especially at the end of this difficult year that we've all got through. I mean, let's see this Christmas as a new beginning. You know, let's look to the future with a renewed sense of hope, trusting in our God. It begins right now. Let's sing our next carol together. Yeah. 
And I just want to say thank you to everybody who took part this morning. And you know, if you have dressed up and posted a photo of yourself on our Facebook page, then we're going to get in contact with you. <laughs> and um, we're going to celebrate Christmas with you. I hope you can join us this evening at our carol service. Six o'clock tonight is going to be fantastic. It's going to be a service of hope and a service of peace. And then we're back here on Christmas morning. Uh, so have a great week, everybody, in these final preparations. And I will see you soon. God bless. God incarnate, Jesus Christ, you brought color into the world, turned darkness into light, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, you brought color into the world, God in to the world and joy unto thee